yes, indeed. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, outsiders of all ages, it is almost time for Texas, Wyoming. Can you contain your excitement? All right, it's a little different than last week. We get it. We get it. We're trying to get over that whole Bama thing and then move on, but we will do that. We've had a great interview already, and now we got to get some outsider breakdown on Wyoming. We'll make our picks for the Texas game. We will make some other picks for big games. We'll get into all of it. Plus, you know what the dick move of the week was? We forgot the dick move of the week yesterday. <laughs> We're moving the dick move of the week. That's a lot of stuff going on with the outsiders. Was that I the dick it. move of the week that we forgot the dick move of the week? <laughs> that is exactly it. Yeah. So but it's- we were the dick move of last week. We can't. Jason can't keep going to that well. It might just be you guys every week. It might just, just be. It's, it's us, right? It's us. Everyone except lower right. Yeah. That's actually. I I consulted with Major Applewhite. He said it's definitely you guys. Okay. <laughs> the orange Oompa Loompa. Yeah. Exactly. I was sure it was going to be Abbott for sending in picks again via ghost mail or whatever no, to win. Those don't count. I don't yeah. count those. I did have a lot of people asking me to, asking me today what the heck was said about Major Applewhite last night. I said, well, you got to go listen. You got to go check it out. Here are your outsiders. Your upper left tonight in the nice quad box is the quarterback chance mock he is ready to roll he's not near as nervous as he was on monday because his bills are not playing by the way you can just come on into the outsiders because the eagles are thrashing minnesota right now and i don't need to be seeing that garbage as a cowboys fan your lower right this evening is jason dick rocking another cool hat what is that hat tonight uh, this one is, it's a Round Rock Express number. It's the uh, Chupa Cabras. I believe oh, they played right, a week right, the, alternate, the alternate yeah. deal with, uh, with yeah. the Express. That's I got a, cool a real problem with minor league hats, man. I got a real problem. I like it. No, it's okay. It's all right. Everybody's got a problem. There's a lot of my problems right by, <laughs> behind me every time you see me. Uh, Bo Edge is your lower left and the country gorilla. What's up, Bo? What's going on? I'm rocking the Mungia real estate hat. You know, yes, you represent. Are. Yeah, we'll hear more about Mungia real estate later on. Thanks to a lot of great partners. By the way, first off, if you guys want to get in to the Specs chat, we'll give Specs their love. Get all stocked up at Specs this weekend for all your game watching. This is also the Outsiders brought to you in part by Poncho. There's Colt in a camo shirt. PonchoOutdoors.com. You will not look as good as Colt does in the camo, but you can certainly try. And look at our man Sal from New York City. Greetings from the NYC. I love the thought that we've got a guy living in one of the coolest cities in the world that loves the outsiders and he loves Orange Bloods Live and he's hooked up to the Longhorn stuff. Sal from New York City, a long timer. Richard tuning in from Texarkana. All right. One of the coolest the, cities in the world. The TK. All right. Hey, you know we have a house in Texarkana, right? I didn't know that. Yes. Look at that. Okay. Shout out to Texarkana. Wherever you're listening tonight, wherever you're watching us from, we welcome you in. Jump in the chat. We love those super chats. If you want to make it jingle or fold or however you want to do it, throw in a little bit, throw in something in the tip jar. We will do that as well. So as we get cranked up, gentlemen, Greetings from Bo's house. Hey, Razor. It's greetings from Bo's house. There's my son chiming in. Bo's kid checking in from Bo's house. See, Jason, we can allow the kids to use the implements of Wi Fi. I I was just going to say, I I would love for somebody to check in from my house, but my whole family's been kicked off the internet so I can pull off this broadcast. So there you go. Yeah. So far, excellent, by the way. So far, very clear. Let's knock, we'll knock on wood. Then it continues. Well done. What's up from West Virginia? Eric, we are glad you are watching tonight. Uh, Washington State, our man Chris Bennett is always there. What's up, CB? All right, so Texas getting ready for Wyoming, gentlemen. The excitement of beating Alabama is never going to go away unless they have stumbles later on. That's what they're trying to avoid, obviously. So as we get into Wyoming, Chance, I know you've had a, a, a chance to take a look at this team a little bit. Everybody knows them for one key reason so far. They beat Texas Tech, and Tech went out there, I believe, as a ranked team. They got up 17-0 in Wyoming's house, and the Cowboys still figured out a way to beat them. What do people need to know about this Cowboys team if they did not peek in on that game? Well, here's the thing about Wyoming that's very interesting and Texas needs to be fully aware of is that they're a team, they start several graduate players and seniors in their starting lineup and what you get when you have those old guys they have they're they're guys they're not going to be phased by yes they're going to walk into the stadium and texas is what texas is it's the night game 
it's going to have the orange lights going. But those older players have a way of they've been there, they've done that, they've seen it. Wyoming has played in big stadiums, they've done it. So they're going to be able to keep their composure. The one thing about Texas that that they need to be very, 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 very aware of is the thing that Texas Tech got bit by. That is, it's the snake of letting them hang around. So whereas Texas Tech on one end was looking forward to that Oregon game and they thought we're going to go in there roll and then they get up on them and it was kind of like, all right, not to mention my bills because that was sad because Aaron Rodgers get hurt and, and, and the whole dynamic changes, but it's the same type thing. Like Tech got up 17 points and they're like, all right, we got this. And then you let them hang around and hang around. And when you let a team like that hang around, they start believing. And you start giving those guys, especially with that many older players, the ability to start believing, man, maybe we can make this happen. Like that's where you got to go in and punch them in the mouth. And, you know, I know I've mentioned it on this show before, but it's one of my favorite things, the Mike Tyson quote, right? Like everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Like that that's the thing. So they've got a game plan. Texas has to come out and hit them early. And Andrew Peasley, quarterback, I think we have to be very, very careful with him because he's a guy that's mobile. He's a guy that can move. He can move the pocket. Uh, against Texas Tech, he had 15 rushes for 68 yards. That's something that, you know, that's more than Milrose had against Texas on, on Saturday. And, and he's a very athletic quarterback. So I think it's a game where Texas has to dominate the game early. Because this Wyoming team, I'm telling you, they're dangerous if you let them hang around because this is a team that's got veterans. It's a team that has now seen when we play a team and if we can hang around close, we can make it happen at the end. So they believe. They know, they believe that they can make these things happen. And if you let them hang around, it's a real problem. So this is one of those – you don't come around and dink and dunk and, and and play around with a team like Wyoming. You come in early off of the wave of, I mean, sorry, roll tide. You, you come in off the tide and you literally punch them in the mouth from the get-go and make them understand this is our house. We're not Texas Tech. Have fun with it. Yep. The key to that to me, Chance, though, is on Sarkeesian. To a lesser extent, Kwiatkowski, but they don't – Texas isn't to a point from an arrogant standpoint where this is a game where they're working on things. Texas needs to do what Texas does. Wyoming's strength is their front seven. They have, I think he's the all-conference player of the year on defense playing middle linebacker for him, mm -hmm. and he's a six-year senior. I know we want every – we talked about it all week. You want to see Texas run the ball effectively. Well, C.J. Baxter's probably not going to go. You already shot – don't try to make it a game where we're going to exert run because that's what everybody says we should do. They're weak as hell in the secondary. If they're going to stop the run, that doesn't mean don't try it. But if it's not there, don't get arrogant, Sark. Run your offense and light up the scoreboard that way. Jason, in terms of this game, it's one of those, like the the, the line is at, what, 29, I think 29, is what I saw? 29, 29 and a half. And a half. It's right growing. There, yeah. So, again, we, we talked about this, you know, in this week's shows, that the fact that they didn't cover against Rice just kind of clouded people's brain on it. They, they really whipped them, but they just didn't cover it. As, as somebody going into this game, are you going to need to see it by 30 or more to kind of check that box? Is that kind of what you're looking for? Well, uh, I'm not picking this game either way, so I don't care a cover, no cover. But uh, yeah, an ass-kicking would be good. Uh, yeah. The ass-kicking that we didn't really see versus Rice would be good. I, I would say it's probably impossible to to match the intensity level that they took the field versus Bama with. But, you know, if, if you can come out pretty fired up to play a, a much lesser opponent, when we were doing our season predictions, I think all of us, with the exception of Chance, who – wagered his beard on a playoff appearance and 11 and one we all said in the nine and three ten and two range because we figured they'd lose to alabama and then they would get stung by that oh oops we, we we didn't show up for this when we lost a game we shouldn't have they have now done what i thought was unthinkable they beat bama at bama and so the test for sark now can you win all these games that you are supposed to win is there going to be somebody and i i hope it's not wyoming when you're a 30 point favorite but is there going to be somebody who comes and stings you when you're not ready because you didn't come out with that level of intensity? So I'd like to see them maintain at least close to, can you get to 85, 90% of the intensity you took to, to Tuscaloosa? 
Yeah. Two things real quick, Jason. Two things. One, we know you're rooting for a blowout because you want your breakout player of the year, Arch Manning, to I mean, actually see the field. Ah, so that's I mean, why you're rooting for that. You guys should root against it because once the nation sees him, okay? <laughs> once. <laughs> but two, point spread aside, victory isn't necessarily just the score. Like, I was having this conversation with somebody. If Texas jumps out to a good start and they're up 28-3 or 28-6 at the half – and on defense, they decide to get some of these younger guys snaps and real live play against a you know a decent opponent, and they make a couple mistakes. It's not going to change my landscape. If Quinn's sitting on the bench and they don't really attack on offense, but they had control of the game the whole time, I'd rather see the young guys, the Malik Muhammad's, the guys like that, get in there and make them play man corner and see what they do. Don't just send them in in trash time where they're standing around shaking hands. So. The, a blowout isn't as necessary as a dominating performance. Chad, I know you're a big SEC guy when it comes to this stuff. That's a Saban thing. Saban mm -hmm. would win a game against a, a runt, and he'd win it 27-3. to three. But right. at no point, at any point in the game, did you ever think that team was getting to the 27? So it was fine for Saban to get some young guys some reps. Yeah, yeah and but I think – yeah, that should be the goal for Texas in a weird way because that's what the Bamas, Georgias, Ohio State, Clemson, they've all been great recently, but they'll do that. They'll have games where you're not paying attention. You just see that final score and you go, oh, yeah, okay, they, they handled their business. But Chance, back to your point on Wyoming real quick, not only the experience, but to me, I feel like this is a more well-rounded quarterback, and I think it's an offense that knows what they want to do because that ain't Bama. Not right now. No, Bama does not know what they want to be. Wyoming knows exactly what they want to be. It may fail against Texas, right? But damn it. They're going down as themselves. They know who they are coming to town. That's exactly right. It's a team with identity. And that goes to the point about the older guys that are starting. They have an older roster and those guys know who they are. And it's like, God rest his soul. It's like the Mike Leach era. Mike Leach knew who the hell he was. And Mike Leach was going to be who Mike Leach was. And he was going to live by that sword pirate reference and die by that sword like Swing that's it. what he was Alabama had no identity on offense and that's that's a real problem for them and I think it's a problem that's probably gonna follow them throughout the year because they're gonna make a change at quarterback and that's gonna kind of change the dynamics of the offense and the way that things go Wyoming Wyoming knows who they are and they're yeah. just gonna go in there and they're gonna be themselves but you know to, to Jason's point earlier, and then, and then Bo touched on it, to me, this is a game where when I was at Texas, we had that attitude. You guys have now talked to Corey Redding. You've talked to BJ. You've talked to uh, Roy. It, you, you have an idea of the identity of that team in that locker room. Our mentality was, I didn't give a shit who it was. Excuse my language, mother. But – we were coming out to punch you in the mouth from the get-go and beat your ass into submission from the start. And that kind of tempered off a little bit. Like it got to this idea that Texas could just go out there, roll that helmet out there, and just because it's got a longhorn on it, we're going to win. I think this team has a different identity, and we're going to see that this weekend, whether they do or whether they don't. We don't know where that is, but we're going to find it out. And if they come out tomorrow – not tomorrow. It's not it, next day. It's not Saturday. Almost they, there. I know. I want it to be Saturday so bad <laughs> because I'm so anxious to see, is this team for real like I think they are? Right. Because if they are real like I think they are, they'll come out with intensity because it's not about the program you're playing against. You're playing against yourself. It's that, you know, we talked about that NOSs, the not our standards, when we used to have to call out how many – plays that I committed that were not up to Texas's standard in front of my peers, in front of my brothers, in front of my teammates, and we all had to do up-downs for that, that's when you start climbing to that next level when it's – I don't care who runs out on that field because we're playing to our standard. Our standard's up here. If they're down here, sorry about you. We're going to run over. It's a freight train coming down the track, and you don't have a chance to stop it. And that goes to my point, though. The dominating performance can be 37 to 6. Yep. Like – the scoreboard doesn't have to be lit up with fireworks because in the in the second half, they did try to work on their running game against the front seven that's pretty damn good and say, let's test ourselves and run Jaden Blue or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be 65 to seven to show dominance. 
Texas needs to show dominance, irrelevant of the point spread or any of that. They need to show dominance, and they need to score touchdowns early. And that's well, just my assessment. But, but to your point, Bo, we've all seen the clips going around Twitter of Texas linemen just throwing people over piles and moving them. And, like, that's what you want to see. I don't mm-hmm. care if we're getting eight yards a clip and running 12 play drives that take six minutes – because when you do that, you're not going to score a ton of points. But what you are doing is you're dominating and you're ex- you're asserting your physicality and your dominance over them. Like, that's the point. I want you to know you're not beating me. Like, you can play like you're, you're here. I get it. We're paying you. You're getting a nice check to come play us. We're going to beat your ass. We're going to shake your hand afterwards. Have a great day. Wyoming is my man Josh Allen's alma mater. Okay? That is true. Love you, bro. But but in all honesty, it, it's not about Wyoming. Like, that's the thing that Texas fans have to understand. It is not about Wyoming. It's about Texas. Yeah. And so uh, we'll see if that's the ma- mindset they take. By the way, speaking of their mindset, we need to get into a little discussion later about this team's mindset. A couple of good pieces of news, I think, for Texas fans coming out of the Steve Sarkeesian press conference today, uh, the Zoom presser on a Thursday. We will get to that. It's the Outsiders on this beautiful Thursday. Thanks to almost 120 folks who are in the Specs chat. If you want to throw something in, please do so. How about this one? Somebody checking in from Whataburger Country. Chad says, good evening. Watching from Corpus Christi. How are you? Jersey Village, a little love tonight. Fat Man, Jersey Village, home of Selvin Young. There you go. Hey, JV. That's where it is. That's where my office is, JV. Earlier, Chance mentioned those lights. Here's somebody with an idea for sound. Chad, I told Alex during his show, Texas needs inner sand land. I'm assuming they mean inner sand man for <laughs> their song. Don, it's an interesting idea. It's is, also is the that song. a suck tones version of that song? I, I think Mason. that's the Muzak version. They, well, you can't afford the rights <laughs> to inner sand, inner sand man, so. land. When the suck Listen. tones played, it's called inner sand land. Yeah. So yeah. Is this one uh, of your devout followers, Jason? <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be tough since Virginia Tech. Is I, really I was about to say, Ch- I knew Chad was going there i mean that's yeah that's a virginia tech deal but i did see it i did see it in the chat chad yeah just play the undertaker's clip from last week i mean yeah i I watched that thing 500 times last week and i was ready to run through a brick wall yeah the undertaker's now i have to go back and listen to the exact wording there was a little bit of specific specificity to bama but if you edit it right i agree with you that as a beginning kind of deal would be good because it felt like a beginning of a game I still don't know what third to fourth quarter should be, but these new lights are going to give them ideas, and they they got to figure it out. But it's got to be organic. You but but could I, you could you imagine, Chad? Though, like, just think about this. Because remember, the opposing team comes out from the north end zone, and they come and they go to their sideline, and then all of a sudden, on that giant sixty-five yard wide screen, mm-hmm. here comes the Undertaker doing his thing, and you're like, and then the orange lights are flashing and. I mean, yeah. Whoa. I mean, you could do it. You could do. You could work that that classic Undertaker hey. intro in in the fourth quarter if you want. As long as the as long as the students believe it. As long as the students and buy into it and the fans buy in, find something. Absolutely. The first time they debut it, though, he's got to be there in the end zone swinging a sledgehammer or something like really pumping him up. You know? Did y'all see that ESPN deal when they had Everlast come on and he went to Wisconsin and did it the was jump awesome. around? Yes, it was unreal. It, oh, was but- great. it was great, and that's a good point, Bo. That special they did, I hadn't heard that story, but it was so organic. The fans loved it. The students loved it right away, and it just locked in. That's how it needs to happen. And if, if it doesn't happen for Texas right away, I'd say no big deal. Do not try to force something on Texas fans. It's not going to work. You think about this, though. Could you imagine? I just want you all to put yourself – that video is playing up on the board. Everybody – in the stadium is looking at the board. The mm-hmm. lights are down. The board is up. The Undertaker's talking. The band is already out on the field in their T formation, and it's going on, and then all of a sudden a spotlight comes out, and nobody noticed, but the Undertaker is standing right in the middle of the Longhorn in the middle of the field, <laughs> in the middle, and he gives that horns up and then slams it into the field, and the band strikes up. with the And just, here they come. That'd like, be great. Oh, uh, I'm going to cast my vote for a two foot, fu- 200 foot high Chris Abbott just declaring that this team is legitimately <laughs> worth a shit. Yes, that would be good too. That is a good idea. We could get, well. him, we could get him from the first show where he was in the black shadows. <laughs> yeah. Until we figured yeah. out his life. <laughs> that, 
That would be perfect. Uh, but, but by the way, before we get you a little bit from one of our partners, let's also remind you of this one. Yes, Chris Bennett, Oscar Giles is on the Wyoming staff. We had Brian Jones on today on the 12 to 3 show, and he did mention that, that one of his former teammates is running the defensive line for Wyoming. So, yes, Oscar Giles coming back home for this one uh, this weekend. So, more Texas uh, Wyoming talk is coming up. We will also get into those picks. The picks where Jason and Bo are doing pretty well. Chris, who's not with us tonight, is doing really well, and Chance and I are not doing well. But we're going to try to fight through tonight with the Bet US picks. That's coming up. But first, Bo, why don't you tell those golfers out there about Star Ranch? Well, that's where Jason goes and lines his pockets. I told him when, I, yeah. when we set up the tee time, go out to Star Ranch. You'll make more putts. You'll have more fun because it's an open golf course. There's it's there's trees. You can go, you know, you get your shade when you need it. But when you're trying to hit the fairway, it's a wide open fairway. So you get to hit driver. You get to have fun. And then when you do get your ball on the green, you make putts. The putts are, the greens are so smooth. Like, there's no other way to put it. They're not grainy. They're not like half the, the greens in town right now that are burnt out and splotchy. Not at Star Ranch. They know that's what people want to come do. Make putts, have fun, enjoy a round of golf with their buddies. Golf Club at Star Ranch. QR code right there. Two, it's easy to remember. 252-GOLF. That's 252-GOLF, the golf club at Star Ranch. Burnout and splotchy. That's what they called me in high school. It's the Outsiders <laughs> on a Thursday night. We're getting ready for Texas and Wyoming. All right. So, again, this is kind of reversed. The bottom two that you see right now are picking decently well. The top two, not so much. Chance and I need to pick our game up. This is where we make our move. Here we go with the Bet US picks. Now, gentlemen, are we all comfortable? With the fact that Chris Abbott's doing well on his picks, does anybody currently think he's cheating? Jason, give me a thought. I don't know. Uh, he 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 is is he five and one? Uh, he's five he and is. one, and he has already gotten his picks in. He sent the picks into the group chat. I'm he's, taking it as legitimate. He's good, he's good at picking, but in in terms of integrity, I would I would say that guy is not legitimately worth the shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, we'll see if you are legitimately worth the shit. <laughs> That's right. On Saturday, if there's stuff oh, food boot and dip at your tailgate, because if not, gambling. you are a bad gambler and I'm a well. I'm on it. Make sure to get that boudin dip figured out. Maybe there'll be We're some boudin dip. We're going to listen to Big dip. Boy and eat boudin. How, about, maybe some, how, how much maybe better could it get? Maybe some boudin dip's going to be on the line for that. All right, so we'll go through the picks here, and then we'll get everybody – we'll, we'll throw you uh, Chris's picks. And Chris Abbott, again, out coaching the Kids of America tonight, but he has gotten his picks in. We'll get to those. Chance Mock. Well, oh, on muted. mute. Oh, yeah. we got that mute. mute again there, bud. Muted. He was really confident about <laughs> how that – is is now. now go. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I have to say, I have to point out in the chat line, my boy Alfio Randall. <laughs> Dude, what now? Alfio, what are you doing, brother? What's up? <laughs> Look at that. What's up, fellas? Oh, man, that's funny. I can't believe he's watching this. Get off the chat and come in for an interview one week. I know. There you go. There it is. Get that right. done. Well, let's get to the picks. Come on. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll get the picks. Bet U.S. Everybody will go around, and we'll get to three picks for the week. There it is. There Make it sure is. What do you let them know, to... gentlemen? They got to scan the code and then get in. Is that how it works? Yes, sir. They get their deposit bonus. Go right in. Start playing. Have some fun. Just don't okay. take chances picks. That, that that's will right. not be fun. Two don't and one last week. Give him a break, Bo. All right. And if not for Texas Tech blowing it for the second straight week, he, exactly. he was he was on his way to three and oh. All right. You I'll know, tell you what. Why don't we start lower right? You all can show us how to do it. We'll work our way around to me. Jason, you start out. Give us your first pick. All right. Uh I, I'm gonna take the uh take the bait. I'm gonna take the poison here, and I'm gonna take Coach Prime and Colorado, the Buffaloes hosting Ooh. Colorado State. They're a yep. 23 and a half point favorite. Uh, Coach Prime is just really TO'd, okay? He's really TO'd that Jay Norvell called him out for wearing his sunglasses when he talks to the reporters. Very disrespectful. I think this Colorado team probably winds up in the 6-6 six and six range, uh, but I think they're going to keep it going this week. They're going to pour it on. 24 is a key number in, in gambling, and I'm going to get just under that, lay the 23 and a half. I will take Colorado and the Buffaloes. Interesting. Right. Yeah, we'll see how angry that team is after all that weird. Weird that it's Jay Norvell. Jason, by the way. Thank Just you. Thank weird you. that it's Jay. No 
Of all people, Jay Norvell. So strange. All right, Bo, what do you got your first pick? The opposite of that. <laughs> this is a rivalry game in Colorado. Colorado State and Colorado fight battles. That, that I mean, that's, it, that's their Texas-Oklahoma game. And, yes, Norvell is talking smack and t- making fun of Dion, wearing his sunglasses and saying, when I go meet people, I take my hat and sunglasses off because I know respect. Yeah, it's going to irk them both, but it's a rivalry game. You want them hitting each other. 23 and a half is too many damn points. Colorado probably wins the game, but by 10 to 17. Okay. This just in both. So, so one of my picks was Colorado State. I changed the order just so I could come in right yeah. there and tell you wrong side, Jason. There's a reason y'all are both 0 and, or 2 and 0. That's a sharp pick. I'd say it's a sharp pick. All right. There, we, got, we got a pick on either side of that game. Chance Mock, what's your first pick? Uh, my first pick is one that I've actually been to. I, I didn't go in Gainesville. I was in Knoxville. Mm. I was there when Florida was up 21 to three. They had won 11 straight games against the Volunteers. Mm. I was there. I saw it. Guess what? Tennessee's too damn strong this year. Florida, they bit me once. Tennessee, I don't care about the crowd. I, I, I get it. But guess what? Six and a half points. Tennessee is going to blow that one out of the water. Interesting. That's a that's a game I would like to see live. I feel like that'd be a great show. Oh, I'm, a little, I'm a little uncomfortable with how phenomenal. much orange, orange is in that house, but but I think it would be a great show. A I, hey, great game. Chad, I walked out of that stadium after being down 21-3 at half, and everybody's – I mean, these Tennessee fans are pissed off, and it was one yeah. of those games where, depending on which section you were in, you had to wear either the white shirt or the orange shirt. I walked out of that stadium – whistling Rocky Top out of my ass because I'd heard it so many times. And it was freaking <laughs> phenomenal. It, the, the experience in and of itself, that's the beautiful thing about college football. It's just the experience. It's going to be a good game. Tennessee's going to walk them. Yeah, they always say you've probably hit the wrong concession stand if you're whistling Rocky Top yeah. out of your ass. But that's a separate <laughs> I mean, That's a separate personal. Starting OnlyFans with that, Chance. I mean, I'm <laughs> telling you, that's a million-dollar idea right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, for my first pick, I am going to evening, guys. Chance's dad and I are tuning oh. in. Look at that. <laughs> as soon as we make That's a reference terrific. to play <laughs> Rocky Top out of his ass. Then the family shows up. You got to love Welcome, it. Welcome, Dad. Family, yeah. did you guys know that Chance could do that? <laughs> I didn't. That's a great talent. We got to do that to close the show one night. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go to the SEC for my first pick, too. I may end up feeling stupid on this one, but I just feel like 27 and a half is a lot for South Carolina and Georgia. I know it's at Georgia. I'm sure Georgia wins this game, but I'll give Spencer Rattler and South Carolina enough credit to say they can keep it within that four touchdowns. So I'll take South Carolina plus 27 and a half. Jason Dick, what's your second pick? I am also in the SEC, Chad. Uh, LSU is at Mississippi State. It would take a real sucker to lay points on the road in SEC and you have found the sucker right here. LSU, a nine and a half point favorite uh, playing Mississippi State because of that loss to Florida State. LSU, who has playoff aspirations, is in a must win situation every week. They have to win all of the games. Uh, Mississippi State needed overtime versus Arizona last week. They, they have, they're breaking in a new head coach. RIP, Mike Leach. Uh, he's coached like three games ever. He has never head coached against the talent that he will see on Saturday versus LSU. 10, a key number. Uh, and I'm getting the hook on that. I'm uh, laying LSU minus nine and a half is my uh, pick number two. There you go. That that yeah, bet US. They're looking for suckers, and they may have found one in you. We'll see. Uh, all right, Bo, what's your second pick? Well, I bet against Coach Prime in the first game. I'm going to bet against his alma mater in the second game. Give me Boston College plus 26 and a half. I'm not chasing the numbers like Jason is where he's really keyed in on these hooks. You can buy the hook when you go to bet US. It only costs a little bit extra. Bottom line is Florida State's good and getting better, but Boston College is one of those scrappy, tough teams that will try to keep it under the number, not because of the number, but because they want to make it a defensive battle. They want to slog it down, slow it down. Florida State wins by 17, 10, 12, <laughs> something, but they don't cover. Give me the Eagles. Interesting. All right, Chance, what about your second pick? Well, I'm going against my, my buddy in the, in the lower right-hand part of your screen there. Because although this is not the Mississippi State of the Mike Leach era, I also don't think this is the normal LSU that we thought was walking into this season. That's your side piece, Chance. Isn't that your 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 it other is. family? 
Okay. It, it, it is my he's side got the piece. Clap, so he's looking for a new one. And when Texas is off, you know, I got to go see my side piece. Okay. I, I get it. I'm taking my son to an LSU game this year and y'all can all get over it. And I will be wearing their colors when I go there because I don't want to deal with the BS. Okay. But here's the deal. I'm a little concerned with Brian Kelly because he had all year long to prepare for that Florida state game. And they walked in and they looked undisciplined. They looked like they didn't know what they were doing. Penalties, turnovers, no identity on offense. It was an absolute disaster. They are a team that believes that they're going to go play for the playoffs. I'd like them to be in the playoffs because I'd like to see us play them. But I will say I'm taking Mississippi State. They're going to keep it closer. They're not going to win the ball game. LSU will walk out of there with a win. But I think Mississippi State keeps it closer than we think it's going to be. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So for my second pick, I'm going to go with something that worked for me in week one. And that was taking Nick Saban when I think he's pissed off and there's a big line to cover. I'm taking Bama minus 32 here because if he was mad coming out of spring and fall and not having his quarterback figured out, how pissed off do you think he is after what Texas did to him? I think he is going to be all over his team this week. I think they're going to click on all cylinders and I think they're going to win that thing going away. So I'll take Bama minus 32. Come on, Saban. I didn't want you last week. I, I need you this week, brother. What about you, Jason? Give me one more. Okay. My lock of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Cash out your 401ks. You can retire on this one right here. Uh, Louisiana Monroe is playing <laughs> at College Station. Here we go. Plus 36 and a half. Okay, guys. I have been crushing the Louisiana Monroe tape, all right? Uh, they have got a wide receiver, too, named Andre Dennis, who is – I'm just kidding. I don't know anything about him. This is a strictly <laughs> anti-Giggum pick, okay? <laughs> Texas a and <laughs> finished last week versus Miami on the wrong side of a 17-7. to uh, We're going to keep that rolling. Uh, 36 and a half points. Let's roll all those points to me with Louisiana Monroe, the – I, I have no idea. I don't. I don't know what it is. But uh, they're the Warhawks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, go Jason. Warhawks. You were like Bill Dance <laughs> outdoors. You caught Chad with that hook, line, and sinker. He took all the bait on that receiver. There really is a guy named Andre Dennis. I got no idea if he's. I really was about to jot down. I was thinking of jotting Andre. Dennis. Is that the real name of McNeil JV pitcher number thirteen? They gave up a bomb to you. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know I don't know what receiver you're talking about, Jason, but I'll bet you DJ Durkin puts a linebacker on him and it fails on Saturday. But that's a whole other story. Bo Ed, that poor guy you... gives up a homer. He doesn't even yeah. get named by name. It's just JV number 13. Good Lord, JV. <laughs> All right. That was good. What do you I'm got, gonna, Bo? I'm going to hate that. I hate even saying this pick out loud because I hate I'm going to have to hear this stupid freaking song. If I watch the game and actually bet on it, I'm going to have to hear Boomer fucking Sooner 100 Ooh. times over, mm. Oklahoma over 60. I can't take – I'm not taking Oklahoma to win, but I'm going to take Oklahoma and Tulsa to be an up-and-down-the-field oh, shootout, okay. and mm. I'm going to have to hear that stupid song a bunch of times, and that's it. All right, you're going to go with the over. You know what? To make you feel better, let's go 49 nothing. 49 yeah, nothing. Yeah, see? Yeah. That, 49 nothing. Called, in radio, that's called a setup. 49 nothing. Nothing wrong with the 49 nothing salute. We can only do it for a couple more weeks until Texas beats them again, and then we'll have a new new salute that we can do. We'll still salute 49 nothing, especially if they win this year, too. All right. Chance Mott, give me a third pick. All right. My third pick, and I think this is a no-brainer. Of all my picks this weekend, this is the one that I'm probably the most sure about. This is I'm not saying put your 401k on it because I don't want people hating on me like they're going to on Jason, but my former coach – the only coach in the history of college football to win a hundred games in two different programs, the fighting Mac Browns of North Carolina, mm. take it on Minnesota minus seven and a half. They got Drake may very well. May be the number two or three quarterback taken in the NFL draft next year. The dude's a winner. I love what he does. I love what Mac is doing in North Carolina. I think they take care of business. I think seven and a half is entirely too low of a line for that game. And I think that's an easy walk away win. I right. thought about I thought about that one chance. I think I'm going to be maybe sorry I didn't go that way. This is the one I'm most unsure about, but I just have this weird feeling. Washington has to go all the way across the country to Michigan State. Michigan State has all this mess going on. Mel Tucker and whatever. This is not the first football team that found out their coach might be a creep. And you got to go that far and try to cover those points 
I'm going to say Michigan State plus 16 can make that a ball game. I think Washington wins it, but I think it's like 10 to 14. I think they can pull it under that 17 mark. Again, I think I might feel stupid by the end of this weekend. But, but Chad, can I ask but a I'm question? Yes, sir. Can I ask? This is a serious question. Yes. Because in no way, shape, form, or fashion is any sexual harassment ever condoned. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. But if it's over a phone conversation, at what point can you not hang up the phone? Like, doesn't it take two people to be on the phone? Like, can you not just go, eh, I'm done? That is, I mean, that's a that's a fair angle. I haven't really thought of that angle before. I think the the overriding I that, think they wanted him out. And I think this is a I, I think it's not a good situation. I'm not he's a dirtbag. He was married, mm -hmm. he, he did all the things he did, and he's gonna pay the penalty with 70 million dollars after whatever buyout he gets. Yeah. But Right. The it's, phone aspect of it is like we've reached a new level when it's phone section. Like, like, right. I don't know. It's crazy to me. I think I it's a bizarro know. world that we're living in right now because, again, I go back to I think they knew what a dirtbag he was and I think they wanted him out. And I think this is a, the way that they chose to go about it, which I think yeah. is a very odd way to do it. It's like, right. I it, think it. It's just it's too on the nose, though. I think it gave them the specific reason. I think it's both things can be true. To be, Absolutely. to be the. I mean, it's like it's like a redefinition of irony. You had the woman that wrote a book <laughs> about the subject, and then you got caught harassing the woman of this. Come on, man! You were stupid enough to do that. Of yeah. all the women, so, on so the, Earth, the question they, is. Is when a T-Mobile box arrives on Jimbo Fisher's doorstep with 78 cell phones that are prepaid, does he think that it's just a gift from the Aggies or are they setting him up? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not sure what to do with that one. All right. Uh, um, I think we got through them all, didn't we? I think we got through all of our picks. We got to give out we the ghost picks Blake. of Abbott. All right, Blake. Blake, let's throw them all up there because we'll get we can uh, give Chris's picks that way. Chris is going Kansas State. Interesting. Three and a half. That Kansas State-Missouri game is an interesting one. He's going Oak State. I have no idea who they're playing this week, but they're favored by seven. And he's going with that Tennessee over Florida. He's going the Tennessee route just like Chance did. See what our man Blake is doing. Oh, Blake's going with the UL Monroe as well, plus 36 and a half. He likes Tulsa. Plus 28 and a half with Oklahoma. And they can cover as long as they score a bunch to get there. There you go. Bo wants the over. <laughs> uh, Kansas State minus three and a half is what Blake likes. This is this uh, is unbelievable. Me. South Alabama at Oklahoma State, and the Cowboys are only a touchdown favorite. I don't know about South Alabama, but they're, they're only a touchdown favorite. And, oh, and this yeah, is you know what? That's probably – that's smart on Chris's part then to jump on that. That makes no sense. I, I, don't, I don't know, though, guys. I mean, if you think about it, there's something that Vegas knows that we don't because you look at that one. And when I looked at that game, I wanted to jump on it. Mm -hmm. But there's something Vegas knows that we – they're those casinos didn't build themselves. Like, yeah, they know right. what they're doing. There is something there that we're missing. But Vegas can't overcome the power of Chris Abbott making the pick. That's, that's what Chris that's is writing. That's why he's leading our contest. Chris is like, yeah, that's how it works for everybody else. Is this else. right? But CB says in the chat, Major Applewhite is the South Alabama o OC. I wonder if he makes cookies for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> They're alive he's fired up this week. Fed. He heard what Adam Dunn did to, did to him. That is great. He is in South Alabama. That's true. I'd forgot. Dunn roasted know. him so bad. I had more calls today about that. I bet you did. My goodness. All right. There you go. Check out. Uh, let's throw up that code one more time. Bet US the 125% uh, sign up bonus. Check it out. Scan the code. Get it done. Go back later and like pause it and then just scan that code a whole bunch and tell your friends to do the same thing. Uh, all right, we're going to get into some more thoughts on Texas and Wyoming. Some players we hope do, do well in the game. First, Bo, let's talk about HBT Designs. HBT Designs. Commercial, residential landscaping, irrigation, concrete work, paving. What HBT is, is a merger of three companies that specialized in three different fields. They decided to bring it all under one umbrella and do whatever you need when it comes to the landscape. You need something seal coated. You need some flat work, some pouring of concrete. You need a new stained concrete floor in your house. HBT Designs can handle it. Scan the QR code or give my boy Bruce Blair a call, 512-589-6150. And everybody thought it was a joke last week when I said if you you know called him and got a deal, he'd bring you free Whataburger. 
I'm not joking. He'll bring you Whataburger multiple times. Good lunch. HBT Design. Scan the code. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I might I might pay somebody to come to my house and punch me in the face if they bring me Whataburger, too. Like, I mean, that's good. I don't care what I'm paying you to do. If you're going to bring me Whataburger on top of it, come on. Let's do it. It's what a burger. By the way, you see this beautiful shirt I'm wearing? I see it, yes. Today, United Rentals, the wonderful company that I work for that pays for this nice studio that I'm in, mm -hmm. we had a nice market meeting. Well, my regional manager just moved here last year from a little place called Alabama. Uh-oh. And so I roll into the manager or to the market meeting and my Longhorn shirt. And Wes goes, really? And I was like, I, I'm just wearing a shirt, bud. He goes, it's the wrong time. And I go, oh, you, you mean the game this week where we stomped your ass? And he goes, go sit down. Too soon. Too soon. A too soon chance. All right. So Texas. You may University. not be employed tomorrow, by the way. You might not. You might not. Texas. Well, you're employed Wyoming. by the outsiders. We pay in hugs. <laughs> right. We'll have you. We will always have you. Texas and Wyoming on Saturday. Let's talk about guys, uh, players we hope have really good games, keeping the momentum going from Alabama. A player you want to see shine. Chance, let me start with you. Who do you want to see go after it in this game? So mine is an easy pick. It's one that everybody probably knows. But at the same time, I think it's highly important. Quinn Ewers, okay? Quinn has had a phenomenal track in the big game. The knock on Quinn has been – and continues to be, can he perform in the lower game? It's almost like sometimes he's developed a little bit of a reputation for playing down to the level of his competition or playing up to the level of the game. No matter how big the game is, he can play at that level. What I want to see is can, can Quinn carry what he did in Alabama into the following week against a Wyoming team? The atmosphere, I hope to God, is good. If they would, if they would go ahead and and bring on the or, uh, the Undertaker, I think he he would get pumped up enough to be. But it's probably not going to happen this week. I'm working my ties, but I want to see can Quinn go into a game that's a lower tiered opponent and play the same type of game. Can he carry that intensity, that calmness, the long ball throws that he made, the way that he composed him? Can he do it in the smaller game? Because he's done it in the big games. We saw him in Alabama until he got hurt. We saw what he did in 49 to nothing. Mm, oh, yeah, 49 to 49. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then we saw what he did in Tuscaloosa this weekend. Can he do it in Wy against Wyoming at home in front of his crowd? He's in the Heisman talk now. Is he the top-tier guy? No, because there's a defending Heisman here. But in order to dethrone him, he's going to have to do it week in, week out. Can it happen? Okay. So Chance, we talked what... about that on one of my crappy radio shows this week. Do you have a theory as to why? Because it is pretty crazy that Quinn Ewer's three best games are uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, and the first quarter versus Alabama a year ago. Is it a maturity thing? Is it possibly a coaching thing? Why? It, it, it's interesting that those are the games that he truly balls out in. I, you know, sometimes I wonder, there are those guys that the game – I hate saying this because it sounds really bad, and I don't want it to sound bad, but the game can get boring. They're really good athletes and players, and the game can get boring to them. And they, it happened to Josh Allen this past weekend. He got bored with the game and got lazy and started forcing throws when all he had to do was take the six-yard throw, complete it, and move on down the road. He gets bored with it and tries to force throws. To some extent, that's what Chris Sims did. Sims could make every throw on the field, but instead of taking the throw that was open, he tried to force the issue. And I think when you see Quinn going into a big game, he puffs up and he plays big game football. When he plays these lower tiered opponents, I feel like he almost gets bored with it, to be honest with you. Hmm. All right, uh, Bo, give me somebody you want to see step up in this game. Step up might not be right. I want to see, Ant I want to see Anthony Hill in a full game setting where he has multiple assignments, where he's not spying Jalen Milrow. And he dominated at it. We, we talked about that. Two sacks, six tackles, four hurries. He was doing everything in a very one-on-one -on -one role. So it's almost like, who's the better athlete, Anthony Hill or Jason or Jalen Milrow? And he excelled at that. What happens when he gets a full start and he has to cover a guy out of the backfield? 
when he has to pick up somebody that's trying to block him and shed it and get to the runner. Like these type of things. We all know he's a five-star and we've seen his five-star athleticism. I want to see him come out and see what he is as a football player. Is he the next Derek Johnson in the Texas linebacker lineage? Or is he a one-trick pony that is just really good at rushing the passer and spying on people? That's going to be fun to watch. Jason Dick, who do you want to see shine in this game? Guys, how can he be the breakout player of the year if Arch Manning doesn't start seeing some... Okay. <laughs> not not, not really. Although, as we did, touched on earlier, it would be great to win this game in the first half so both uh, Malik and Arch Manning can play some meaningful snaps in, in the second half of this if, game. If you'd have completed that statement, Nick Hajda would have went from six to midnight <laughs> sitting there waiting to talk about it tomorrow. Oh good, good way to stop yourself. <laughs> uh, but let's go with the the, the running backs. If it's uh, Brooks or, or Jadon Blue, or I guess you're, you guys are saying that you don't think C.J. Baxter is going to play in this game. Uh, basically, they're going to go game time decision on it, but you'd kind of lean towards maybe they're going to hold him out. You'd have to say a perfect game from the Longhorns top to bottom versus Alabama, but the running game was really one thing that didn't get off, uh, not really against Rice either. So let's see some explosives from from the running game uh, and, and let them tack on some numbers versus Wyoming on Saturday. The guy I want to see and Arch Manning and Arch Manning and Arch Manning, obviously, obviously, and Arch Manning. The guy I want to see shine in this game, fellas. I want Sark to show them he's got another weapon that the nation hasn't even really seen yet, and it's number two, John Tay Cook. I want to see him with, with, with a big play schemed up for him in this game. It could even be maybe after things are under control, but I want to see number two, man. Maybe that drag route, that middle drag route where he threw his hands up because he knew the ball was going over the top. How about design that play where you throw it? to number two and let him go let him show you what he can do i hope john tay cook has a moment in this game so texas and wyoming coming up i tell you what let's get a little monkey of real estate bow and then we will make our official picks for texas and wyoming and we will get the dick move of the mm. week in but first mm. monkey of real estate bow before i talk about ray Mungia and real estate chance your former teammate just chatted in chris sims sure did get bored in the big 12 championship game <laughs> laugh out loud hook him wow i'm sorry we've had some like oh. ut on ut crime on this show but that yeah. might be the biggest offender of them all Damn. one of his linemen making fun of him you know what the worst part of that whole thing is is that the guy that picked him off twice was also the guy that my first start as a sophomore in high school split my chin open and knocked me out of the game Damn. His name was Aaron Killian. He had 25 tackles against the Woodlands that night. And I later saw him on a night that I was actually out with, with Dion. And he said, yeah, bro. He goes, the first time we played all that year, I think we beat him 56 to 7 or something like that. He goes, I noticed Chris locked in on his receivers. Coaches noticed it. We had seen him. And they decided, I'm just going to spy him. And that's what he did. And it was, uh, it was tough. I just had to point out, I, the, the chat was too yeah. good. No, that's good. That's a good one. That is excellent. All right, Bo, hit a little Mungia Real Estate for us. That chat was good, but even better is Mungia Real Estate. In his world, Mungi Ray Mungia, Austin born, went to Austin High, started his brokerage with one specific goal in mind, to specialize in Austin. He's not trying to be a jack of all trades and do commercial here and ranch land there and just take whatever deal comes along. No, he's an Austin-based guy. He built a team of 20 agents. He's got specialists for Cedar Park, Leander, Liberty Hill, South Austin, North Austin, Maynard by, you know, where Chad's out, Elgin, all of the above. Mungia Real Estate can handle your needs. Scan the QR code. Go check out the website. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But my guy at Mungia Real Estate, the guy that's helped me get a home deal done, Evan Conair. Evan Conair, 937-417-3736. He's a bulldog. He's scrappy, and he will get you the best number. Trust me. Evan Conair with Mungia Real Estate. Put down the bunny. Oh, yeah, every time. All every right. Time. So we'll get to our picks. But first, speaking of ripping on a former Longhorn quarterback, check this one out. Super chat. $5 from Chris. Can we really say Quinn has arrived if he hasn't dribbled a ball on a scramble chance? Man. I mean, <laughs> did somebody guy. just think Chance was Matt Norgren? No, no, yeah, so, no. I'm, what I'm saying is, somebody just, I mean, like Matt Norgren might just be hanging out tonight, just watching some TV, and now everybody's going to let him know that he got ripped on the outsiders. I mean, what is that? <laughs> Dude has millions in the bank and looks like a male model. Oh, darn. He got yeah. caught on He's national really TV 
playing quarterback. He he is a also handsome. a phenomenal play. I would love to see somebody repeat that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say a he is a handsome man. I'm sure he doesn't care. And b that is still one of the weirdest, cool things I've ever seen a quarterback do in yeah. a football game. Uh, after, I'm gonna stay away from that one, boys. After screwing up, that is an amazing, uh, an amazing uh, recover there. All right. In a week uh, of what's nothing but Longhorn on Longhorn crime, you're going to stay away from this one? That's right. Chance yeah. is going to take the high road. Of all oh, things, no. it's Nordgren where he takes the high road. I want everybody to understand <laughs> that, right? Major, Chris, we got all kinds of stories flying well, around. All I got to say about Major is what kind of dude bakes cookies for – what kind of grown man bakes cookies for his coach? <laughs> Stop stealing Adam Dunn's line. But you're right. I'm not yeah. stealing it. I'm repeating it. <laughs> I, I'm still going to say until someone – if you tried the cookies, I would take that argument. If you didn't try them, you don't know. They might have been the greatest cookies ever made. Oh, really? Because I remember a little talk we had on a text today, Chad, where uh -oh. I think it was Major's Cookie Co. What was the tagline, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> I have I don't recall. Do you guys? I don't, I don't do you, recall. Do you guys think the South Alabama quarterback made cookies for Major today this week? Is After that, he oh. heard the show, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe he did, and then Major threw them out the window like Adam I, did. I think it was something like they're legitimately not Tiff's treats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legitimately not Tiff's treats. Definitely, definitely is what that is for Major's cookies. All right, let's get some picks in. Who wants to go first? Anybody think they have a pick that's so good they need to go first? So nobody steals it. Put All right. Jason on there. Uh, I Jason? will take the Longhorns 52 to 10. Uh, I have uh, not any particular conviction behind it, but I think, uh, as we've said a couple times now, I would love to see just a first half ass kicking and this game be over by the time they hit the locker room. Uh, and, and yeah, if it winds up a backdoor cover from Wyoming, it's not the worst thing ever. But I am put, put me down for 52 to 10 at Texas. 52 to 10. Do we have a Chris Abbott pick, Bo? Have you heard from him on a pick? I didn't hear the pick. I, he likes Texas big, so... I don't know the exact number, and it doesn't matter because it's a ghost pick, and he doesn't get to take credit for it, right, Jason? Yeah, I'll just write That's Texas. Right. I'll if, write Texas big. How about that? If, if he wants to put in a, he put in his picks via you know text what? for the other games. He didn't put in a Texas pick, so he didn't get to claim it. Okay. Until fair. he shows up, I'm making picks for him. Uh, 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 Chris Abbott called me. He said 27 and nothing Cowboys. All right. Like, <laughs> 27 0. That's what he told there, me. There it is. I, I think he meant Dallas Cowboys over the chat. <laughs> yes, he might. He might have meant that. All right, Bo, give me a pick. 41 to 9, Texas. Oh, okay. Interesting. 41 to 9. Three field goals? Or that exact score is in the chat right now, Bo. How unprepared are you for this show? What's going it on? It is here? not. And everybody can see the chats. Uh, Don't lie. That man. <laughs> 0413. It says, yeah. holy cow. Look at Fat Man going 41 9. That's incredible. That is incredible. Uh, I talked about it earlier when I was talking about 41 to 6. I just added an extra field goal. I didn't realize someone was going to chat it. Oh I'll amend God. it so we don't have the same number. 41 to 6. Fat Man 0413 is definitely a Bo Burner account, though. So that's fine. We can count that. <laughs> Are you changing well, it? I am fat 41, and, yeah. 41 6? 41 6. I'm amending it so me and Fat Man aren't, you know. 41 to 6. Chance Mock, what is it? <clears throat> okay, well, I think it's a different thing. I think I do see out of Quinn Ewers what I expect to see. I think he does take the step. I think the defense continues the dominance of which they've shown so far. And I think Texas breaches that 60 mark. I think it's 62-13 Texas. 62-13. That awesome. would be that would be fantastic to watch. That's damn near a Scottish guy score right there. Uh, I'll go 41-10. 41-10. I was Bo, Bo was right on. I'm almost right on it. I'll go 41-10, five touchdowns and a couple field goals for Texas. All I want to see out of that defense is 10 or less. A 10, a 3, a 7, a 0, all will be acceptable. Anything above a 10, I might allow a 13. Like chance, it's very, I'll allow 13 if 62 is on the other side like yeah. Chance is talking about. But I like the idea of a 10 or less in this game. Look at Sal in New York saying 37-7. There's a 42-16. People throwing in their predictions. So there are our picks. Before we get out of here, gentlemen, take it to the bank. 45-17. I like the sound of that, Don. Appreciate you watching. Um, all right, Jason Dick, we did not get the dick move of the weekend yesterday. Okay. So that was our dick move of the week or my yeah. dick move of the week because I guess I'm responsible for doing these things because I'm supposed to be able to keep all this organized. That was obviously garbage. It didn't happen. Who's the dick move of the week outside uh, of that this pot week? 
potential sponsors get at us. So we get this sponsored uh, segment, then we go straight to number one. Okay, we have it right at the start of the show. Yes. Uh, I, I was accused by a listener this week of being a Debbie Downer when it comes to Texas. I prefer uh, objective, rational analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, but just for that guy, for you guys, for the Orange Bloods community, I've cooked up some super duper Homer juice for this week's dick move. I feel like the national media is not giving Texas its due for beating Alabama. I was watching the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the, the Stephen A. Smith hot take a Palooza program, uh, first yeah. take. Uh, <laughs> right. and, and, and Molly <laughs> asks Shannon Sharp, uh, is Texas back? To which, obviously, we are more back than anybody has ever been back. Uh, Shannon Sharp groaned. He gave a groan. Then Ryan Clark parachutes in and immediately starts talking about how it's over for Nick Saban, how Texas just, just beat a washed Nick Saban. So I say the national media, who is not recognizing Texas and their backness, dick move. Dick ah, move. look at you. See, that That should get you some points with the Longhorn fans. I, I, I'm i not sure if I would quite go to, to, to that, to all the way to that level, but I do understand what you're saying. They it's because it's a rarity where Texas is playing a team with a little more clout, a little more branding, a little more, obviously more success recently. And then we love to tear them down. You love to build up and tear down. And there's nothing better than a tear down on a Nick Saban. If we think Saban or Belichick is crumbling, people just love to sink their teeth into that one. So, but, it, but it's so, it's so annoying. And, you know, I had this conversation with Mike Barnes, one of the, the great, um, you know, sports uh, sports host for news for in Austin, and I said, "Man, why does the media always go negative? Why does it always have to be freaking negative? How about we make people feel good about some shit for once?" And he's right. like, "Because it doesn't sell." And I, I'm with Jason on this. Like, I saw it all week long. It was not, "Hey, Texas played a great game. Leave Nick Saban out of it." Texas played a great game and they dominated that game. They played very good, sound football throughout the entire game. And instead, I hear national media going, well, is this the decline of Nick Saban? And so seriously, y'all really think the national vibe was more Bama, was Bama down. But you really don't feel like Texas got enough credit nationally for what they did. I, I, I think it was a mixed bag. I think yeah. there was some of that. I mean, I, I watched clips with Cowherd and Joel Klatt, and they were very high on the Longhorns. Klatt was extremely mm -hmm. complimentary of Quinn Ewers and had him in his Heisman candidate race and all those things. But the problem with that is the same idiots, and I'll say it, idiots, because they – they may be smart individuals, but when they go on TV and they just throw, as you say, hot take machines, they just throw out crap and let it stick against the wall because the same guys six weeks from now, if Saban rips off six in a row and looks dominant doing it, we're talking about how Saban should be a coach of the year candidate in spite of all his titles because he overcame a slip up against Texas early on. And, and they'll still diminish it by saying it was a slip up. It's, it's, the media, I'm not making it about the media, but when school, certain schools like Alabama or Nick Saban or the New York Yankees or when Texas actually won some damn games earlier in the 2000s, Texas, they just like to make, they, they like to point the finger either way. It's never objective. Yeah. And it, it never feels like it's the right measure. It's got to be, it, it, it can't just be what it is, right? It was a really good, impressive 10 point win at Tuscaloosa, something we'd never seen. And yeah, it does feel like it, it, it can kind of swing, swing a little far both ways. Well, uh, there's, there's your. Like the whole conversation leading up to the game was how amazing Jalen Milrow was, how he's this freak athlete and he's going to decimate Texas. Even on like game day, they're talking about what's Texas going to do about Milrow. So Milrow has a bad game. I don't think Milrose washed or Milrose like he may get benched longer down the line, but he may come out right. and have some good games. And Texas just did a good job defending him early in his career. But now all of a sudden the conversation is Alabama has a quarterback problem. Well, they didn't have a quarterback problem when all y'all were predicting Alabama to beat us by 10. You were talking about how we couldn't contain their quarterback. Right. It's, it's not objective. It's just, what have you done for me in the last four seconds and turn it to where I want it to be? Derek says, John Wick did don't care about media. <laughs> yes, that's probably true. And real quick before we get out of here, just so I pay off, pay this thing off. Today, Sark mentioned to the media that Quinn Ewers contacted him and said, we need to have a players only meeting. Is that OK? And Sark said, sure, do whatever you need to do. Chance, have you ever heard of a players-only meeting after a game like that? He wanted to get everybody together to say, enough of hearing that you're good, enough of this crap. 
we have to get it focused in on our standard for what comes for Wyoming. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't heard. I haven't personally heard of it, but I've heard of it before. And something tells me that is what is different about this team and about the maturity level of this team is the fact that if you have any sense at all, that now we have entitlement entitlements and now we're just going to roll out there and again, throw a helmet out like that, that shit ain't going to work anymore. We worked our ass off to get where we're at. We put in the work. We all know how hard these kids worked, young men worked throughout the entire off season. And it paid off for one game. That's not the goal. The goal wasn't to beat Alabama. The goal is to be number one. And that happens by going back to work week by week. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing for Texas fans to hear. I'd be excited if I was a fan. That's leadership. Hearing something like that. Because the the last probably, I don't know, million times we've heard the phrase players only meeting. It doesn't have a good feeling. But I think this one does. Xavier Worthy's also bringing up the whole John Wick thing again, how they have to turn the focus on everybody else and really do what Chance was talking about earlier, what you guys are talking about. Jump them early. Attack early. Make them feel it early in a game. That's that that whole John Wick mindset. Don't wait for them to attack you. You attack them. And we'll see if the team can uh, can do it on Saturday. We are all picking Texas to do that on Saturday by different degrees. I kind of hope Chance Mock is right. 62-13 sounds like a pretty fun game. I love to, watching it. To watch. Heck yeah. And remember, we're doing another watch along with Jeff Ketchum and myself. Brought to you by Pint House Pizza on Saturday. 7 o'clock kick, so about 6.45. We will jump on and talk Texas and Wyoming and hopefully uh, a big Longhorn route. Y- y'all Before- aren't doing a watch cast for a and Louisiana Monroe. I guarantee you Jason will be watching it from his tailgate. We are not, and for the record, we were not. It would not have mattered what happened last week. That was that was not going to happen. But we do thank the three to 4,000 folks that did check that one out. I was a little surprised at that number from last week. All right. If the Warhawks uh, upset Texas A&M, I will do a watch along for the remaining Louisiana Monroe schedule. Okay. Oh, my every, God. That every, is fantastic. That is a not binding promise. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, we've got uh, we got to get a couple more in here before uh, before we are done. Both stuffed Cajun meat market. Do we have any new bets that involve Cajun food? We, we do Jason? not. Jason's going to pay off the boudin dip this weekend at the tailgate. You can take care of your tail, tailgate really easily. Click on one of the QR codes. They can build a package for you. They have pre-built packages. You can order it on the website. Go pick it up Saturday on your way down to DKR. I promise you, you will love Everything you get, it stuffed. The the dips, the sausages, the boudin, all the Cajun delicacies right there in one spot. It's a real Louisiana Cajun meat market, just like in Louisiana, stuffed Cajun meat market. Sounds yummy. Sounds hey, yummy. Also, also, always, always sounds good. Always feels good in a poncho shirt. Even though it's getting cooler, the poncho shirt can still help you out. Ponchooutdoors.com, the camo, the orange, the white. Bo's rocking a t-shirt right now. They've got hats. They've got all kinds of great stuff at Poncho. And uh, I think the shirts are like, you know, SPF. What are the SPF 50s or 60s 50. walking around? 50 on the hoodies. Oh, it's 50 on the oh, – come on. It's it's fantastic. Uh, I got to try one of those hoodies at some point. PonchoOutdoors.com. Thanks to Poncho for being a great partner of ours. We have gone a little over, but, hey, you can do that sometimes in this format. Before we get out of here, Chance, obviously we have a lot of great fun here on the Outsiders, talking a lot of fun and a lot of football. But every once in a while, uh, there's also some serious stuff we need to get to. Before we get out of here, I know you wanted to say something. I, I did, Chad. And, and you know, in, in life, I think it's fleeting. And I, I think you take opportunities to make sure you point out stuff. And today we learned that uh, one of the coaches at my son's football team, um, Tom Lubenow, and I want to say his name because I want it to be out there. He, he passed away last night unexpectedly. Um we got the email at the end of school today because they didn't want to tell the kids. And um, the guy leaves behind a wife, two young children. And I'm probably going to come to to these people that watch this show uh, for some sort of GoFundMe as somebody that's, that's dealt with the death of a spouse and, and, and having to raise children on your own. It's tough. But I think these moments give you the opportunity to realize, you know, this is a guy that was impacting kids' lives. Um, you know, he was a junior high football coach. I mean, we, we're talking about these players that are playing on the major major stage and, and the, the Sarkeesians and, and those kind of guys 
This was a guy that was happy in life, fishing, hunting, and coaching kids and, and, and having an impact on their life. And, um, you know, his wife and, and his parents and family and friends are, are left asking a lot of questions tonight. So, you know, in that, just remember, um, as we're, we're really close to the anniversary of losing our friend, Sean Adams, that, you know, you don't know when the last day is going to be. And that's something that was really big in the Texas family. When we lost Cole Pittman is make sure you tell the people you love them, um, because you don't know that they're going to be there tomorrow and you don't ever want to miss that opportunity. So be good, be kind to people. And, and as my friend, Sean Adams used to say, you know, do something good for people today because the people doing bad aren't taking a day off. Yeah, it's well said. And thank uh, you for that chance. Yeah, thank you so much for for saying that. And rest in peace to to that man. And and just uh, can't help but think for his think about his family. Uh, in fact, chance. I think today is the anniversary of Sean Adams. Uh, our man Chris Bennett, one of the super fans out there, he brings it up all the time. He'll bring Sean up, and um, I think today was the anniversary. I can still, I can still feel that moment and how crazy that was. And it was Jeff Ketchum that told me. Jeff Ketchum called me, told me I can take you to the spot where I was standing. Just heartbreaking stuff. Like you said, life is, uh, it is a fleeting thing. So rest in peace to that man. Rest in peace to all those that have uh, that have gone. And um, we, are, we are thinking about all of them. Well said, Chance. Uh, it is the Outsiders and we wrap it up on this Thursday. So we're getting ready for Texas and Wyoming. Don't forget, you got all the stuff on Orange Bloods Live. Thank you to over 17,000 subscribers the number keeps growing and we appreciate that tell somebody you know that loves texas sports and all this conversation tell them to subscribe tell them to get your notifications set up so you can find out when all the shows are coming on and remember outsiders is monday wednesday and thursday nights during the season tomorrow morning bright and early 6 30 a.m is get your horns up and uh, there'll be way more conversation getting ready for Texas and Wyoming. So everybody have a great night. Stay safe. And we'll check out the end of this NFL game. I think the Vikings sort of made it a game by the end, but I think the yeah. Eagles are kind of. trying to score that backdoor trash cover touchdown, I think. Is that what it is? Ah, Eagles are up 13, unfortunately. Okay, Cowboys yeah, fans. The, num the, numbers, the number's seven, and the Vikings have it at the 30, driving with a buck 30 left. You know what's coming if you bet on the Eagles. So this is about the cover, right? This is no, about you know, the cover. If you yeah. bet on the Eagles, they dominated the whole game, forced like seven turnovers. The sports yeah. book Kirk is popping Cousin. right now, okay? And the game is not over in the sports book. Yeah, that's no, right. No, it is not. That's right. Also, a shout out to our Shout out to our guy, Chris Abbott, who's coaching the kids of America tonight. We hope everything went well. Oh, can, I want to say to the opponent of Chris Abbott's Little League team, uh, keep your eyes open. That guy's a cheater. Okay. That guy <laughs> is a cheater. Fair enough. Fair enough. Warning. Warning shots have been fired. Everybody have a great night. Until 9 o'clock on Monday night, we are the Outsiders, and we are.